Okay, for your convenience, use the solution guide. So, meron dyan naka-provide na solution guide. This one. Isusupply lang natin yung amounts. Again, the defined benefit cost or expense components. Sir. Service, interest, remeasurement. Okay, so supply the amounts. If not available, compute. Okay, in relation to service cost. Current service cost given. So that's 2 million. So lagay lang natin, current service cost, 2 million. Okay, so ano ba itong past service? So alam na natin yung current. Ito yung benefit earned ng employee for the service rendered in the current period. At dahil babayaran niya yan after employment, present value yan ng benefit earned for that period. So question, ano naman yung past service cost? So refer to the definition of terms dun sa ating lecture notes. So ito yung past service. So yan ay change in the present value of the DBO for employee service in prior periods. So kaya tinag na past or prior service cost. So bakit magkakaroon ng past service cost? So resulting from plan amendment. So in-amend yung plan. It's either in-introduce, withdraw, or nagkaroon ng changes dyan sa defined benefit plan or dahil sa tinatawag na curtailment. So ang past service cost, pwedeng magkaroon yan dahil sa plan amendment or curtailment. So pag sinabing curtailment, significant reduction yan by the entity in the number of employees covered by a plan. Now, ang past service cost, it can be positive or negative. So positive pag nag-increase ang benefit. Negative pag nag-decrease ang benefit. Okay? At yung uh, past service cost na yan, whether positive man or negative yan, recognize yan immediately in PNL. Okay? As part of service cost. So, by the way, uh, before, tinitingnan pa kung vested or not. So, ngayon, it doesn't matter whether vested or non-vested. Uh, recognize yan immediately. So, in this problem, nagkaroon ng plan amendment. Okay? So, uh, ito, plan amendment siya. Okay? At anong naging effect ng amendment? So, yung DBO, after the plan amendment, naging 20,600,000. Before, so ito after to ha. So before plan amendment, okay, 20 million lang. So yung effect, okay, increase in DBO because of the plan amendment. So yung increase na yun in DBO because of plan amendment considered yon as past service cost. So dahil increase in obligation, so expense yan. Okay, so that's 600,000. So, 20 million 600 minus 20 million. So, ito yung naging effect ng plan amendment. So, yan ay i-recognize as past service cost. Okay. Now, ano naman itong settlement? By the way, ha? Merong tinatawag na routine and non-routine settlement. So, pag sinabing settlement, extinguish na yung obligation. So, again, under the defined benefit plan, Pag nagko-contribute sa plan, hindi pa na-extinguish yung obligation niya. Nandun pa rin yung obligation. So kaya lang, hindi pinepresent yung obligation sa balance sheet. So dinideduct doon yung plan assets, yung net amount, yun ang nasa statement of financial position, either asset or liability. Now, pagka na-settle na yan, so extinguish na yung obligation. Okay, kaya lang, may, may routine, may non-routine. So pag routine, ito yung nakaschedule ba? So, nakaschedule na magre-retire. So, nag-retire, sinetel na. So, yung non-routine, hindi nakaschedule na magre-retire. Tapos, biglang nagkaroon na ang settlement. So, yung gain or loss on the non-routine settlement, yun ang kasama sa service cost. Yung routine, part yun ang remeasurement. Okay? So, kung may effect man na yung settlement, yung routine settlement, captured na yun dun sa remeasurement. And in this case, nagkaroon ng settlement. Ang settlement, uh, ang present value ng DBO settled, 3.8. Pero yung settlement price, 3.5 lang. So get the difference. So yung liability, yung obligation, 3.8. No? Ang ibinayad lang, 
So this is what gain on settlement. Kasi ang obligation 38 eh. Ang ipinambayad lang 35. So gain on settlement. At yung gain na yon on settlement, so part yun ang service cost. Yun nga lang gain minus. Okay, so 38 less uh, kaya 35. So gain on settlement. Okay, so yung current service, pa service and gain on settlement, so kasama yan sa service cost components. Net, okay, 2, 3. Okay, so ang requirement sa number 15, PNL. So aside from service, ano pa ang nasa PNL? Okay, interest. And yung interest, ibinigay na actually. That's 180. So clear lang natin. So, interest net 180. So, interest on net defined benefit liability. So, dahil liability yan, expansion. So, in PNL, 2-3 service, 180 interest. Get the total. So, that's the amount in profit or loss. Okay. So, 15. Bravo. So, no need to get the details of 180 kasi pinrovide na naman. So, pero basically, yung 180 na yan, DBO, okay, interest expense on DBO, interest income on the plan assets, interest expense on the effect of the asset ceiling. So, kaya lang in this case, provided na. So, no need to get the details. Okay, now the remeasurement. Okay, so ano bang kasama dyan sa tinatawag na remeasurement? So, ito yan. Okay, so yung actuarial gains and losses. So yung actuarial gains and losses, again, in relation yan dun sa DBO. So ito yun. Ito yung actuarial gains and losses. So yung related naman sa plan assets, actual return. So yung return on plan assets, excluding yung kasama dun sa net interest. Okay, tapos yung effect ng asset ceiling. Excluding yung nandun naman sa interest. Okay, so supply the amounts. What happened to the DBO? Nag-increase daw yung DBO due to changes in actuarial assumptions. So dahil sa changes in assumptions na yan, nagkakaroon ng actuarial gains and losses. So dahil nag-increase ang obligation, that is what? Loss. Nadagdagan eh, ang obligation. Loss yan. Kaya remeasurement loss on DBO, 500,000. In particular, yung remeasurement na yan, actuarial loss. Actuarial loss on DBO. Now, the actual return on plan assets, 1, 2. Yung return on plan assets included in net interest, binigay sa problem. So, get the difference. So, yung actual return, 1 million 20. Minus mo yung return on plan assets na isinama dun sa interest. So, 1 million 20 minus 900, yun ang remeasurement on plan assets. So, since higher yung actual kesa dun sa uh, interest, okay? So, that is remeasurement gain. So, 1 million 20 minus 900. So, remeasurement gain. At dahil gain yan, minus. Kasi ang kinocompute natin dyan, expense. So, yung gain, minus. Okay, so actuarial loss, yan. actuarial loss on the DBO. Okay, so gain on the plan asset. Okay, so yung remeasurements na yan in OCI. So loss of 500, gain of 120, okay, so net loss 380. So number 16, letter A. Okay, so net loss of 380. Okay, so again, ano yung tatlong components? Sir. So kaya pag ang hinanap, define benefit expense or cost for the year. Sama mo lahat yan. Service, interest, remeasurement. So get the aggregate amount. So clear lang natin yung ating, ating screen. So service plus interest. Plus remeasurement. Okay. So the aggregate amount, that's the defined benefit expense. So 17 letter C. 
So, kaya lang ha, take note, for presentation purposes. Yan ha, for presentation purposes. Yang service cost, interest, and remeasurement, presented yan separately. Although yung tatlo na yan, components ng defined benefit expense, pero sa reporting, so hindi sila ina-aggregate, ina hindi sila ina-offset. Okay? So yung service, Okay, although hindi in-specify no sa standard kung paano ipepresent. Okay, pero uh, kaya ang consensus diyan, yung service cost part ng operating expenses 'yan. Ito namang interest, of course, finance cost 'yan. Tapos yung remeasurement, so of course, component 'yan of OCI. So again, yung service, operating expenses, yung interest, finance cost, tapos yung remeasurement, OCI. Component, separate component of OCI. Pero pag hinanap pa, yun nga, katulad sa 17, okay, so yung defined benefit, cost, cost or expense, so pagsamahin mo yung tatlo. Sir, service, interest, and remission. Okay, now, in this problem, binigay na yung interest on the net defined benefit liability. So, paano kung hindi ito given? Tayong magko-compute. And that's number 